let's see what happens. I don't know if you can even see Arena loading. It starts opening the game, and as soon as it clicks to load in, it just cuts. Hello everybody and welcome back to another Magic the Gathering Arena video. Today we are playing our very first Wilds of Eldraine deck and it is time to celebrate good times because what I'm playing with today is the celebration mechanic that has come out with Wilds of Eldraine. For those who haven't seen much of what is going on, don't worry, I haven't seen much either. Um, those who have watched the channel for a little while will know what I tend to do when I release when a new set is released is I do a couple of drafts, uh, I open a few packs using some of the gold that I've accrued in the previous set, we're down to 12,000 now, I see what rares I get and then I try and build around those. Um, we didn't get lots of like consistent rares but what we did open was three blind mice uh, times three. So all of these were opened, I haven't crafted any. So three blind mice is a two and a one costing saga that has four chapters. Chapter 1, create a 1-1 one, one white mouse creature token. Chapter 2, create a token that's a copy of target token you control. Obviously you can, at minimum, create a 1-1 one, one white mouse, assuming your opponent hasn't removed it, which so far has never happened to me. Although they can deny you two uh, chapters of value, uh, no one wants to waste a removal spell on a 1-1 one, one white mouse creature token. And then chapter 4, creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1, get vigilance until end of turn. So obviously the base with this card is... You get three one ones and they get plus one plus one. It's a little bit wedding announcement esque. Um, however, if you can create other tokens such as roll tokens or other tokens, then you can copy those too. Um, if you can generate creatures outside of these tokens, then this has a big go wide uh, impact for your opponent. So what I then so what I thought is that this card is particularly good at triggering the celebration mechanic, which is. If two or more non-land permanents enter the battlefield under your control, blah. Because this is going to be, on turn three, two non-lands in itself, because you get the saga and you get the one mouse. Each turn, uh, the next two turns, is going to create you one permanent minimum. So if you play anything that has celebration and haste, for example, these two cards, that's going to trigger their celebration effect. So this is like our celebration enabler in the deck. And also a kind of like wedding announcement -y type effect. Uh, maybe we should be running wedding announcement instead, but that wouldn't be fun. What is fun is trying this out. Let me just go from the, through the deck from the bottom up. Commander faces Kakazan. I won't go through what this card does. Why are we running it in this deck? Obviously, when we play Komano, that is a permanent entering the battlefield. And then two turns later, it's another permanent entering the battlefield. Because it exiles and returns as the etching, that could help us trigger some celebrations on our creatures. Three play with flyer for removal and go face damage towards the end. We are then playing two, Rotisserie Elemental. This is a new one costing rare, one one elemental from Wilds of Eldraine. It has menace, and when it deals combat damage to a player, put a skewer counter on Rotisserie Elemental. Then you may sacrifice it. If you do, exile the top X cards of your library where X is the number of skewer counters on Rotisserie Elemental. You may play those cards this turn. So this can basically build up counters and then we can sack it and draw a load of cards that we can play only that turn later and only if it does combat damage to a player. So it has come up for me before a few times, but it's not, it doesn't come up that much. It's a 1-1 one, one menace and we're just trialing it. I don't know if it's good in this deck because really this isn't creating more than one permanent. You know, maybe a Voldar and Epicure would be better in its spot for this particular deck. But since we have two of them, I want to try them in the new deck. Um, one slight uh, combo in the deck is that the Charming Scoundrel, which we'll come to in a minute, can create a Wicked Roll token, which is an aura that gives plus one plus one, and when it's put into the graveyard from the battlefield, each opponent loses one life. So we can attack with the Rotisserie Elemental, put a Skewer counter on it with the Wicked Roll counter on it. We can sack it to do one more damage to the opponent and then get to draw some cards. So because this has a death trigger that it can put on this, make it bigger, Menace, there's sort of a little combo going there, or a synergy, let's call it, rather than a combo. We're running four of Torch the Tower, so this is a common one costing instant with Bargain. Now, Bargain is a mechanic that you may sacrifice an artifact, enchantment, or token as you cast it, and it will do something additional. Torch the Tower deals two damage to target creature or planes or get if the spell is bargained, and said it deals three damage to that permanent, and you scry one. If a permanent dealt damage by Torch the Tower, die this turn, exile it instead. So, this is basically the, like a Magma Spray, or I can't remember what it was called from the previous set. There's been a few iterations of one red do two damage and exile the creature or planeswalker but this also has the ability to bargain do three damage and scry now 
we do have quite a lot of tokens hanging around as you can tell from three blind mice we've got lots of little one ones we've got a squee to generate more one ones we've got an archangel elspeth to create more tokens and we have the treasures and wicked rolls from charming scoundrel so we've got tons of things hanging around that we can use to bump this up to three damage if we need to um, given that it seems really strong i mean it's basically like an instant speed strangle that scries for you what's not like, what's not to like about that this seems really good to me and we've got this fancy little art for it since uh, it was like the first step on the mastery ladder to get this art so very cool next card charming scoundrel this one i crafted four off because i am hedging that this is going to be a card that is good in many decks the reason being is it's flexible this is a two costing one one human rogue with haste any two costing this is basically a 2-2 two, two for 2 with haste, gets play, <laughs> right? Even the, the the rubbish one, I can't even remember what it's called, I'm going to have to find out now, this thing. Uh, Feldon sees play, just because it's a 2-2 two, two with haste, it can't even block, still sees play. So anyway, this thing will see play. It has options though, so why am I calling it a 2-2? One of its options is to create a wicked roll token attached to target creature you control. So it can put an aura on itself to give itself plus one, plus one, and then when it dies, each opponent loses one life. This is basically a better version of Felden. I know Felden has an opportunity to exile some cards and you can play them. However, this has no downside and it has a slight upside in that it'll do one damage to them when it dies. Even if it gets exiled, the aura still goes in the graveyard and each opponent loses one life. So it's even better than if it dies trigger. But you could also discard a card and draw a card so you can cycle away if we're getting flooded or create treasure tokens if we want to ramp into one of our four drops. So this is flexible, it's dangerous for the opponent, it creates wicked rolls which works well in things where we have bargain abilities or obviously if we want to create two permanents in one go, the charming scoundrel and the wicked roll token counts as two permanents so this on its own can trigger the celebration for any creature already down same with if it creates a treasure token two permanents for one two costing card so this is an enabler in the deck but it's also a beat down in itself so it seems very very well placed in the deck obviously if we we want lots of creatures that are two cost as well because we're playing commander faces kakazan so we're running 11 two costing creatures here so we pretty much never run in the situation where we play this and don't have a creature on turn two Four of the Raging Battle Mouse. So I think I opened two of these and crafted two. Now, this doesn't seem as convincing. I wouldn't rush out and craft this one. However, in my play, it's been interesting. It's been interesting. It's been better than I thought it would be. So this is a two costing two one mouse that's rare. The second spell you cast each turn costs one less to cast. So it's gonna help us dump our hand onto the battle a little bit quicker. It enables some of those interesting lines where we can play this uh, for example, if we have three open lands, we can play this and we can play our Charming Scoundrel. Because we'll play this, it'll lower the cost of the Scoundrel to one red. We can run in with both. We can trigger the celebration easier because our spells are cheaper on the second one. Um, it also has a celebration itself, which is uh, to give a target creature one one until the turn. It's not the wildest, most interesting effect, but it can be, you know, that damage can tick up, especially if we manage to remove our opponent's uh, early cheap creatures with our torch and our play with fire. Um, this can add up. So I think it's not brilliant, but I think it's good enough that we're going to give it a go in this celebration deck. Ash, the Party Crasher, is an uncommon. It's a red and a white 2-2 with haste. I was just saying about 2-2 for 2 with haste. Uh, but it has a big upside, which is that it has a celebration of when, if two or more non land permanents enter the battlefield under your control this turn, when it attacks, you put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. That is significantly better than another creature gets plus 1 plus 1, or target creature gets plus 1 plus 1, because this thing will just keep growing. We'll keep triggering the celebration. It'll keep growing. Our opponent will have to deal with it. That is pretty good for a 2-2 two, two with, two with haste, given how easy it is for us to trigger celebration. For example, if we play this on turn 2 and play 3 blind mice on turn 3, it's going to trigger Ash on its own. This will be a 3-3. Three, three. It'll be a 2-2 two, two hitting for 2 on turn 2. It'll be a 3-3 three, three hitting for 3 on turn 3, and it'll keep growing. So this is something that basically has to be dealt with, which is why I like it. Any threats that we can put down that our opponent has to deal with means we're forcing them to react to our strategy rather than progressing their own. Three blind mice we've covered. Uh, the Lutgerant of the Ball is an uncommon 3-3-3. Three, three, three. Now, I would say this is probably a little bit weak, but we're going to try it because it's got the celebration, and why not lean into the mechanic that we're basing the deck around? The celebration for this is target creature gets plus one, plus zero, and gains menace until end of turn. So 
you know, for example, if we play this and we have three blind mice out, we can give something 1-0 and menace that turn. Menace can be good for forcing through our big creatures, like Ash can be a big creature, um, Godric can be a big creature, Raiju can be a big creature. So it could come in handy for squeezing in that extra point of damage. However, it could just end up being a 3-3 three, three for 3. Let's see. Squee. Uh, we've got a one-off because a it's good as a one-off it's you know in terms of it's best in the deck as a one-off because you can keep exiling your one copy uh exiling four cards from your graveyard to bring your one copy back it creates a one one red goblin token when it attacks which gives us some more tokens around however it's a slight number with things like ash because this is only when it attacks if two things enter the battlefield so whilst we does bring two things in on the turn it doesn't do it before you attack so it will trigger things like um, uh, none of them, none of them, because they're all on the beginning of combat. So it won't trigger anything. Oh, it will trigger this one. Uh, Godric, which brings me nicely onto Godric Cloak Reveler, which is two red and a one for a three three with haste legendary creature human noble. Now it is legendary, but we only have two of them anyway. So two of them, it has haste, it's three three. So this is a good stat line, but not brilliant. Celebration. As long as two or more non-land permanents enter the battlefield under your control this turn, Godric Cloak Traveler is a dragon with base power and toughness 4-4, four, four, flying, and the dra classic dragon ability of pay red. Dragons you control get plus one plus zero until end of turn. It loses all other creature types. Now, this attacks well with Squee, because if Squee comes in and attacks, this thing will, before they get a chance to declare Bokka's game flying, and become a 4-4. Four, four. So that's why it's a nice little combo here. Less of a good combo with these two. Godric seems really good because we have a lot of ways to trigger a celebration now we won't often be playing this on turn three the reason being that we won't be able to trigger a celebration and you kind of want to trigger the celebration on the turn it comes in to ensure you get that big hit of damage from it we could do if we have Kamano uh, on turn three this is going to come into the battlefield Godric himself coming in will be the second permanent so he will come in as a 4-4 four, four. so that is our line which means we play this on turn three Otherwise, we'll probably be playing one of our other things that sits on the board and generates us more permanence before we play this, such as Three Blind Mice, such as Archangel Elspeth or Squee, um, if possible. Now, we can just play this out and then hope to turn it into a 4-4 the following turn, but that will be our ideal play pattern with this card. And in my testing, it seems really good. This is a... Having anything that has flying and haste and can put some decent damage in on turn three, it's got to be worth a try. Archangel Elspeth, why am I running this? Because it's a Planeswalker, it gives us a little bit of stick, uh, sustainability on the board for those pesky board wipes and destroy spells. It can create tokens, uh, so it can come in uh, as a permanent itself, it can then plus one to create a second permanent. So it can trigger celebrations on its own as a four drop, which is nice. It can also give uh, our creatures one, two, two, and flying. So it can help push through that extra damage if our opponent has managed to build up a board of blockers, things like shelter, things like big green creatures um, that could be played in this meta. Uh, so it's there to give us that little bit of extra damage and evasion. Also, it's minus six if we do ever get there is gonna be really effective because we have an absolute ton of permanence at mana value three or less. Uh, so it's got high value if it can have any value at all. And then two Thundering Raijus. Why am I playing Thundering Raiju? It's a good closer in low curve decks. We're only running two of them, but also it has a little bit of synergy. It has synergy with our Charming Scoundrel, which can put Wicked Roll tokens on creatures. Bear in mind, those Wicked Roll tokens can be copied by three blind mice. So it's second and third chapters to create a, top, so a copy of the Wicked Rolls, put those auras on all of our creatures, and auras count as modifications for Thundering Raiju. So it can be that when this comes in, we attack. Let's say we already have three modified creatures. This can come in and do three damage to face and then all the extra sort of attacking power that it has. So it has a, quite a bit of synergy with the Scoundrel in this deck. It has synergy with Commander Faces Kakadon, which puts counters on things. It has synergy with Ash, which puts counters on itself. So it just feels like it has good synergy in the deck. Uh, Elspeth puts counters on things. So... It just seems to have that kind of finishing potential and enough synergy to make it worth giving a go. Don't know if it's going to be the best card in the four drop slot. I think in an aggressive deck like this, four drops really have to prove their worth. But it feels to me like it's going to be pretty good, maybe even better than Elspeth. But I want to try this too just for the enabling of Celebration. I want to make sure that if we've got cards that have Celebration, we can enable them. The only other card that I want to talk about in the deck before we get started, we're running 24 lands because we're a relatively low curve deck, is the Restless Bivouac, which I probably will mispronounce 
many times during this video because this word is not commonly used. Um, it enters the battlefield tapped, it adds red or white, and it has three to power it up. It becomes a 2 2 white ox creature, it's still a land, and it attacks. We can put a 1 1 counter on target creature we control. So it's kind of like a, a faceless haven in the sense that it can power up for three and attack and be a 3 3. Uh, if we put the counter on itself, we can count as a modified creature for Raiju, and also it can put counters on our other things. So it can put counters on Godric if it was flying to get that extra damage in, um, or wherever we need them to be. So it's just an extra offensive land. Um, I probably would play one more if I had them. Obviously, the fact that it always enters tapped takes you know means it's not quite as good as the the creature lands of old, like Den of the Bugbear um, and things like that. But I think it's worth playing one in an aggressive deck like this because it can give us a little bit of ball white protection and help finish off uh, some opponents, hopefully. Hopefully. That's the idea. That's the deck. It's kind of thrown together based on what I opened and based on the style of deck that I like to create when a new set comes out. Let's have some games. See how we go. All right. Let's throw ourselves into the fray. For, <laughs> for ages, I've been calling this set Winds of Eldraine. I actually thought it was Winds of Eldraine. My brain just couldn't read that word correctly. Obviously, this is the wilds of Eldraine standard. Jesus. And I get to play with one of my favourite cards again because I've been playing Alchemy for so long where this has been nerfed. I've been a sad man. And now that I'm back in, Al I'm back in standard, we can play this brilliant card again. This card, I've seen it in lots of people's decks and I haven't been blown away by it, to be honest, because of this card's in the set. And this is just a beast in <laughs> this. This is some interesting uh, animation happening. I'm not convinced by this one yet, the Raging Battle Mouse, but we play with what we're dealt, and this is what we're dealt. It can be a 4-3 next turn. Uh, why have I got a stop on this? So, this enters. That triggers. And this enters, because this there's no counter. So this will definitely enter the battlefield as a 4-4 four, four flyer with haste. Draw as well. Fine. Let's just go with this because I don't want to attack with the battle mass this turn. So 5 5 haste. Turn 3. That's painful. And here's the, the pain on the ass herself. Alright, so. We can't make two things enter the battlefield this turn, but we can attack and kill Sheldred. Exactly as I was. So it's only a next turn, so he has to play this this turn to get it back. Yeah, okay. Then hopefully we'll find something that can enter the battlefield, but it would have to be a one drop. So it would have to be a Kamano or a Rotisserie Elemental. Yeah. Okay, fine. And fine. Okay, that's interesting, isn't it? Because this creates two. Which of these do we want to get rid of? This one, probably. And then they can't block this. And then it looks like... So we're going to get a token from this, and this will come in. So it's looking pretty good. It looks shady for a while with, with Shelly, but... Thankfully, opponents had six lands in the top 12. This crackling fire is annoying, right? This, yeah, 
four tiers of value. Granted, it's not tons of value. Uh, okay, that's very nice for them. Very nice. At least we've got rid of it now before we start doing all this. So we can make this a 6 4. Pretty good. And then we just need to draw a permanent next turn. Sorry, I should have said a non land permanent. No attack. Come on. So he'll have to block Godric. They go to one. The chance of getting out of this is minimal, but I'll feel bad if they do. They can't play underdog because they're too low. Okay. That's worked against some pretty premium standard cards. That's a positive sign. Let's try again. Okay. It's nice to see, whenever we first make a new aggro deck, being able to win on the draw against known cards is a good thing. That's definitely a good thing. We haven't got an untapped white for turn two, which means we might not be able to hold open for this on turn one. We might have to. And it will be a, yeah, we'll just play the scoundrel on turn two. Okay. I'd rather do it the other way around, but unless we top an untapped white land. What is this? When it attacks while you control a creature power 4 or greater against double strike. Okay. I think we'll just kill this, because this would have been a 2-2 two -two anyway. Uh, yeah. So they might even be able to play a creature with power 4 or 3. Okay, no. Stormseeker. God, this card still seen play. How is this still in standard now? I feel like this card, I actually can't remember life without this card. We could play this and this, or we can play this. I think we'll play this and this. And we'll attack like this. This will be a 3-3. Three, three. That's good. We've played some things. The Stormseeker hasn't flipped. Okay. This is where it could get a bit painful. Because this can make something powerful. This will then be double strike. 5-4 double strike. E. Little block there. That's not a big loss to us. This will mean two things enter. this I think it's going to be a close one so we can put the wicked roll token on one of these creatures as a chumper I'm just thinking about trying to get through to this last 11 damage 11 is quite a lot though but we've got two in hand you always put the storm sticker on Halana and Alina should put these tokens in. Uh, 7, 11 damage. Wait, hold on. Yeah, we have to block this one. So on the crack back, we've got 6, 7. Maybe 8, 9, 10. Oof. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Elemental because we can sack that. I 
only one thing has entered the battlefield, sadly. We didn't get something else that's one damage less, so this is only 8, 9, 10. We'll sack this and see if we can find another down. Oh no, what's 11? Yeah, okay. I think we're there. Because we then can sack this, which puts this wicked roll in the graveyard. And we then play with fire face. We only talk to Sundown Pass as well. But, doesn't matter. It looked bad for a second. But that was good. And we're leveling up. Yeah, I was originally a bit of a hater on myself putting rotisserie thingy in the deck, but actually it showed there that it, it has potential plays and lines. I, you know, things that we might not have otherwise. Yeah, this thing I, I am very dubious about how good this is because you don't really trigger this that often and otherwise it's just a 3-3 three, three for 3 so this could be getting cut but I feel like when you first try a deck like this where, you, where you're like leaning on a mechanic you kind of have to try the different like cards that have that mechanic because otherwise you just never know you never know what's going to work and be good I think it's so hard to tell without a trial what have they got? Two lands. Good. They can't play them both, so that's actually only one card. So let's get Ash in. We've got another Ash as well, so... Sadly no Kamano. Squee, okay. Uh, this isn't the one that deals with Squee effectively, unfortunately. Do we do Godric? So maybe we do the Belligerent. So it's a better blocker. This has got haste, so I don't want to waste time. But we could play this, stick a wicked roll on this, and then play with fire. Maybe that's better. Thing is, this has a chance. I think we could wicked roll, attack with this, and it has three. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. So if we wicked roll on this, that's two permanents in. I actually did not mean to attack with both, but it's probably not the end of the world. <laughs> We're going to kill Squee during, before combat. Like so. Should have let them try and kill this, maybe. Nah, because then they get the extra 1-1. One, one, so also, then no one attacks this unless the completely stupid. Okay, we can't play Elspeth, which is a bit upsetting because this would be two to permanents and it would be a life-linking permanent, more importantly. So we can't make two permanents enter this turn. We can't power this up and attack with it. We can... Just, do we even want to attack at all? I think we want to attack with one. I, do, I can't let them sit on 13. If we get too far behind to the point we can't kill them in one turn, we're in trouble. Two blockers is probably okay. Yikes. Trample is bad. If he's got a big power up here, like the new red card, the plus two plus zero and a wicked token. We're in serious trouble. Let's block like this. Try and block as much damage as possible with. Definitely a threat of lethal. Okay. So, round two. We can play this, which would be eight damage. This sadly does not go face. Nothing's gonna grow. We can do this. I hit this, that would only that would take them to one. Sugar crap. If this was on here, no. So eight. So we can't attack with all of them. Let's 
let's do this now. We just have to hope they don't have any face damage. I mean, they almost certainly will. They can't actually use Squee. No. That was one damage off as well. I'm not on the play against someone, on the draw against Mono Red, man. I mean, the land screwed us a little bit. I'm not going to take that one too badly. I mean, this deck is far from optimized, and we're still just working out what works. Uh, I would say that the uh, belligerent Majig uh, dude underperformed that game, which almost expected. If it does so again in another game, we'll cut it for something else. We'll try another card. Got lots of mono red around. At least we're on the play this time, but we need to land. Okay, we've got our battle mouse. This is good time to have this, because it might live for a turn. Can't block. Okay, that's good. Should we get the blind mice in? Or do we do scoundrel hold the torch? I think this blind mice will be one more damage due thanks to this. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. We are on the play. Let's take it to them. And also this the value that we just get off this long term will be good. We can deal with this later. Another one of these. If we draw a land, we're so happy. Why are you doing that to face in your own turn? Yeah, we're quite a bit lower. It's not so we could just play this. That's already two things entering. Maybe we just play this, just keep stacking. We've got blockers then if we need them. We might have to block this. Yes, we will have to. Because this is seven. Why are they showing me what they've got? It's so weird. This is almost a bit annoying, but it's turned too slow. Should we just block like this? Yeah. We can kill this with this. Exile it. This kills us in the air. So we have to spend both of these to kill this. Yeah, right, there's no other way. So we'll do this. Wait, hold on, then we'll take one damage from this. So we can't do that either, then this will kill us. Can't actually cast anything. spell and we're just there. If they've got even a Kumano, we die. That doesn't worry me. Alright. This is seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh no, we can't play this. Oh, we can play it. No, we can't play anything. Oh, we'll get the one one off the battle mass. Oh, I'm one off that. Okay. That oh, was close again, man. But just on our favour because we went first. It's a tough one against Mono Red. Okay. Yep, not all. Okay. Belligerent. This is your last chance, my friend. Man, it sounded good, but... Okay. 
Okay, fairies. I have seen fairies once or twice in... Oh, had a bit of lag there in my um, testing, so I think we know roughly what to expect. Lots of flyers, some flash, counters. Alright, let's try and get the battle mouse in. It's probably going to get countered, but then at least we have more chance of playing three blind mice. Okay, we didn't. Go for the throw. Okay, I haven't seen that much in, in recent times. Italians and Messenger, yeah, you put a 1-1, one, one. so this is the bad one to see. I kind of hope they put one on the Dream Team, because you know, we can actually get rid of that. So if we play this, this could be a 3-2 Menace. Yeah, and then I guess we can trigger this, so we could play this. No, let's do this, let's do this. I think we need to get the celebration things in early. And if they keep attacking, which they have to to trigger this, then we'll we'll win the race, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I said that confidently. I have absolutely no real idea what beats what. Yeah, no one does. Ooh. So that could be a 4-4. Four, four. Okay. Oh no, they're not putting them both on that. So letting them cycle through for what they want. To. Interesting that they've done that. If we do this, we can also play Scoundrel. We could actually play this and this. We could hold Iganjo, attack and then hold. Shoot one of these if they block. Play this and then hold torch for the dream thief. Yeah. Because they could even try and put a 1 1 on this. And another fairy into the battle, and each print is one. So if we kill this now, we save ourselves a life, but we might cost us. I mean, if we think they're going to put any on the Dream Thief, we should just torch that instead. Yeah, we'll torch that instead. This is also legendary, so... Better off killing non-legendary things in general, if you've got a choice. This is target, so we get to see what they target at least. Okay, that's interesting. I think that's a good enough reason to kill that. So five, six, seven. They need to start defending. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Because we could play this and then play Elspeth. Because also if we just I'll play Elspeth plus it, get a soldier. So five, six, seven. Five, six, seven, eight. Plus two. I don't even have lethal next turn. Uh, if we play this plus, this, I mean, we can have a big menace thing that they have to block. And then we've got a planeswalker. The alternative is we play this. I, I honestly don't know what's the best thing to do. Let's play this. If I had played this first, we could have played the Scoundrel as well. Let's play it on this, and this. Then, 
you can kill that 3-5. Or they take 5, which <laughs> they don't want to do. They really don't want to do. Maybe they believe they have lethal, I don't know, five, six, is there a fairy lord or anything? No, they're not attacking with anything. They are doing it now. Nice thing is we can do the same next turn, and attack them more. They'll get a spell starter, they get whole encounters. What's this going to do? Should have played that before you drew all those cards. I guess they're working their deck out as well. Okay. That's nice. Okay, they're out. They're out. They're out. So we've lost our ability to get something cheaper now. Uh, so we can definitely get this triggered. I think we maybe should promote something to flying. We've already had something enter the battlefield, so this is triggering anyway. Because 3, 6, 9, 11, they have lethal next turn. Obviously, we could force them to block with this. Uh, by playing this and putting a wicked roll on it. But then we're just wasting mana. I can play this. Can they... oh shit. I'm just thinking we may have fucked that up. Because this will only be a 4, so they could block with this and something else. Let's attack with this. See what they block with. So we can kill that. mistakes, you have more of a chance of coming back when you're behind, but if it's just like everyone's playing optimally, like game theory optimal, then um, it's just who draws their stuff, assuming your deck power level is relatively similar. This is really nice if we draw a red land. Really nice. This into this could be beautiful, as long as we can play one of our hand lands. We've got two turns to draw one, so odds are in our favour. Unfortunately, we have missed once. Thankfully, no cut down. Yeah, you've got to read the card now. This flips, we play one permanent. Worst case, it's Kamano. This will be five, six damage heading the way. Seven with this. Yeah, get rid of it. Okay, so that's Nice. Not red. So we can't go direct. But maybe we'll do squeeze since there's no blockers. Yeah. Get them something that they don't want to destroy to destroy. This, they also don't want to destroy, but also I guess when you play Squee, we have one more token that we can copy if. Uh, I think we're definitely playing three blind mice here, so we'll just attack. They can't counter, but maybe they'll kill Squee. Looks like it. It's okay though, we get in for three and we get a, a decent value of Saga down. We've got two tokens, so unless they board wipe, 
or oh, like a minus one all creatures or something, we've got value off of our second and third chapters. Okay, they may be just got a land screen. Still, easy. Okay. This deck is doing pretty well. I mean, we're playing against no one, everyone who doesn't know what they're doing, which works. So we can play, I mean, we've got the tap land, right, for turn three, but actually we don't need turn three to be on three. So I think we'll go the fast route since we're on the play. If I was on the draw, I'd probably play this first. Because the, the longer term value is going to be more worthwhile. Here, let's just get in their face. This into this is dangerous if they can't sort it out. Gonna be black playing these things. Yeah, here we go. Ah, there's a thing. Okay, so we have to pay two life because of this battlefield forge, but going forward we will be alright. So if they play something like Tenacious Underdog, we'll just play this land and torch the underdog. If they play something that doesn't need this, we'll play the other land and, and get this down. Arguably, this thing needs torches, so... We lost out on one damage, but they would have had a good blocker for either creature. But we put the one one, plus one, plus one on. Thankfully, there's no Fable. In standard. Fire creature gets minus three, minus three until end of turn you gain three life. That's pretty good, isn't it? So we can play this and this in one turn. We can then use that on here. The uh, whenever it's a second spell costs less, like you have to watch for those lines. It's relatively obvious, but you do have to be thinking about it. This is seven costing at the beginning of keep a tire creature from any graveyard onto the battlefield under control. So it's like a portal to Phyrexia for seven. Not bad. Portal to Phyrexia only costs nine. I mean, the sack three thing is any situation useful. But we've got no good creatures for them to grab, so if, they, if they're playing that for seven, we've, we've already lost. The problem with this is like <laughs> chapter two, if they get rid of our 1 1, which is probably feel counterintuitive to them, but we lose all the value we would get here. Interesting, what is this deck? Harvester, Epicure, Scoundrel. So this is going to create, yes, yeah, so it's artifacts of some kind. Like they, everything they're doing sort of implies they want to create artifacts. I mean, that is a solid. Solid card. Could have almost been better playing the Bayou but Bivouac. But then we've got our second permanent entering the battlefield, so uh, let's give it to the Battle Mouse. They do have two mana, so they could kill any of our stuff in response, but 3 3 3 2 2 2 1 1. Some power coming their way, 4 7 9. So six damage. Plus two. They don't want their things exiled. Interesting. Maybe they're thinking long game. Because this is obviously a better choice for this. But. Okay, four mana now. Thankfully the treasure's gone, so any higher scale ramp is, is lost. We've got one creature entering the battlefield with the three blind man. Okay, this is why they didn't. What is this? If the spell was bargained, which it was, put one of those uh, onto the battlefield. Okay, so they can return this to the battlefield. They've only got one in the graveyard anyway. So they can create another treasure, I suppose. Start ramping towards this. I kind of, yeah, kind of see what's going on here. That's quite fun. I just think it's because we have this land we can do something even if we top a land. We've only got a 39% chance to top deck a land, but 39% is like guaranteed in the arena. Okay, let's go. Let's go, let's go. 
let's go four or five. I mean, there's board wipes in standard. It's just, are oh, they playing them? Because they could have that battle. I don't care about Shodra, because this is going to buff all of our creatures. Yeah, we've got five creatures getting plus one, plus one. GG. I feel like maybe I should stop the video before we start losing. It was that eight games and we've lost one. And it was one damage in it as well. We'd, we'd do a big losing streak, I swear. But um, it's nice to play a few games when a new set comes out, just to see what other people are doing, play, you know, what they're playing with. I mean, that last deck, it looked a bit weak, but actually had some interesting concepts going on, I think. So it's nice to play and things like that and keep an eye out. I was waiting to see some more green or similar. It looks like that might be what we're after. Yeah. Battle mouse, battle mouse. We're still not sure if you're any really good. Kanker Bloom. We can get rid of that later. They can sack it and kill the Kakazan, but that should be okay. Sack it and proliferate means 3-3. Three, three. It's also okay. Okay, this is not my green. This is cool. This is cool. Are you gonna sack that? What are you doing? That's not what I think. At least do it in response. I play this first because we, a scoundrel can then bring in a roll and be two uh, permanents. Okay. We'll. Get rid of this now. Nothing for them. Because it would have grown before they attacked anyway, so this would always be four. We probably want to hold for a ganja. Oh. In fact, yeah, we can play this and have a ganja. Sweet. And then Raiju can, can happen later. That way we get a buff by and we kill the uh, Raiju. Of course, they have a way of giving it indestructible or something. Well, they just react with their lightning strike. Alright, I think we'll just run at them with this. I mean, technically, that's already modified because it's got a, a wicked roll on it, right? Yeah, auras count as modifications. I think we just gotta win. There's three, they can only block one. Okay, sorry, that was the eighth game. We're now eight, we're now seven and one on the video, which is pretty good, and that is a rapid fire games. We are flying through the games. Okay, someone who's also platinum to maybe more of a challenge, especially since we're on the draw. Okay. <laughs> Mono black as well is pretty bad for us. In general, black against creature, fast creature decks, they've got things that go for threat and cut down that just make our life bad. So being on the draw against Mono Black is one of the worst, worst things for us. We'll just try a Scoundrel obviously, I think. We could even discard and draw with it. It's a 2-2, so I don't want to try putting up. Oh, I think I might have crashed. Hello? Okay, yeah. It had to happen eventually, right? A new release of Magic the Gathering Arena. What would it be without a crash? I did get through eight games, mind you. But I have been experiencing a bug recently where it was crashing, and then when it was trying to load me back in, it would perma-crash until... Um, 
and never let me back in until the game had finished. Thankfully, it doesn't seem to be what's happening here. Do we draw this card? Yeah, I think we do. Let's get rid of this B bivouac because. I think trying to put a wicked roll on this is just asking for it to be destroyed. We're cycling through some of this crap, this land that we don't need. We have no white cards, we have no extra white land to power this up. It's not, it's not doing its job here. And with two black open, this is just so susceptible to being destroyed, the chance of using the wicked roll is low. Treasure we don't particularly need. Okay, fine got them to use this on something that cost two as well. They couldn't level up the sleeper. I'm happy-ish with that. What we won't be happy with is if they have a, a sheldred in there. Look, um, how is this fun though? You're just using all the OP cards from the past. I love how some people have always see like a new set as like, oh, I'm going to level myself up here. I'm going to show them. Like, it's ridiculous, man. Get a life. Belligerent of the ball coming through, maybe. Look at that pain. Mishra's Foundry. Mm. Yeah, this is better for us. Costs one more, but it's, uh, it adds red and white, and it gives us one more down to something. I'm fine. That's okay. We're gonna do this, then this, then this next turn. Oh, come on, dude. I'm going to see a lot of virtue with persistent stacks, I think. We'll definitely take the wicked roll this time on here. Is they've got the sleeper for value and this to just well no creatures in our graveyard anymore no creatures in any graveyard good no more life oh. <laughs> okay it's not only is it mono black not only we're in the draw but they've got trespasser and flesh gorger both of which are good for gaining life and we are an aggro deck so this is not what we want okay that's uh not awful. We can discard and draw. Man, <laughs> come on. I want that shit. I mean, we could have got an attack in, but this, yeah, this is fine. Uh, unless we top deck wonderfully well. I don't even know what wonderfully well would be. Maybe a Raiju? Maybe. Three blind mice, Elspeth. Yeah, I don't know. There's, there's not a lot of great draws for us against uh, Flesh Gorger. We can't. Actually, we could we could top the thing that lets us kill the oh, yeah, more life gain. Yeah, I think we're just going to go up there. That's def that deck is definitely the beating to us. I don't think even if we're on the play, we're beating that with Flesh Gorger and Trespasser. We haven't got the removal to sustain against those kind of life gaining cards, especially with the uh, this thing that gains them two life as well. It's nice. Ah oh, shit! I've just had that bug where Magic the Gathering Arena crashes when you try and load into a game. So watch this. You can see what happens. I don't know if you can even see Arena loading. It starts opening the game, and as soon as it clicks to load in, it just cuts. Errors, there's no error message, it just closes. And what I've worked out is that it won't let me rejoin um, until the game is over and we'll get a loss for it. I have no idea what's going on, it's not related to the deck because obviously we haven't made any changes to the deck. Um, I just have to wait a few minutes and I'll continue recording. But what an annoying bug, it just, it just costs you rank for no reason. Okay, we're back in queuing, so that's maybe the fourth time I've had that bug it and every time I've checked my profile and we've lost rank so I don't think it happens to the other player they must just see you join and time out I haven't actually seen anyone else uh, that happened to anyone else yet but um, it must happen or it's something specific to my setup and my computer but 
to be honest, I've got pretty high spec machine. I'd be very surprised if you know if it was something too much like that. This is a nice start. We can stick a wild roll on. We could roll on here and get straight into a three three. See what mono green's gonna deliver on the play. Oh, are they land screwed now? Yeah, yeah. They've still got power though, definitely not to be uh, underestimated here. I think we're gonna play this. Because we can put the plus one and plus zero on the etching. Then swing for six. They've got four man the next turn. There was some mythic green thing, and there were some rampy looking creatures out there that like pulled lands from all over and stuff, but this could be a very fast start for us. If we play this and this next turn. Awaken the woods. Okay, so let's just think. We're not gonna play this. They're lining up um, the planeswalker. So we've got eight here. Six, seven, uh, yeah. Uh, you're gonna have to block with something at least. So do we do Raiju? I reckon we do. Or do we do this, or do we do this and this? And Raiju next turn. Let's try that. Coming, so they're blocking one thing. Couldn't win this turn anyway, I don't believe. I don't think they can win this turn either, though. Even with their planeswalker, three, four, five. Okay, we're not worried about this, I don't think. And this is the one that's like the limited boy. It's gonna be really nice with the planeswalker, but they're not gonna get another turn. They've got four blockers. Got five attackers. They're gonna take. Okay. Maybe they'll get another turn. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But we're gonna put uh, a wicked roll on this. We're then gonna do this and put a one-one here. Then we're gonna have we're gonna have three modified things. So they're just gonna die. Houston. But no cigar, my friend. Okay. Just give me a nice, quick, clean win. On the play, on the play, on the play. That's not on the play, is it? Okay, not my fastest start either. No Kakazan, no Blow of Fire, no Rotisserie Elemental. Nine. We got 13 one drops in this deck. That is not one of them. Green white enchantments? Ah, oh, come on. Can't even attack with this. It'd be a bad attack into that. Yeah, fine. certainly have an enchantment that can remove things like ossification which they could use on ash they could just beat us down this is this is a bad start being on the draw and not having any of our 13 one drops like we've got the, the, the yeah, yeah, yeah. this is so bad 
it's my nice little torch the tower that would have gotten rid of these before they got a chance to grow. So if we play this, we can play a three drop as well. Maybe this one. Yeah, I think so. I'd trade it for both of those, yeah. We're holding up well considering. I just should have the, the value of these is so insane for three drop. Yeah, I don't know it though, it's not that good of a card. All the value is very small and incremental. That's what I like about it. That's what makes it difficult to deal with, right? It's not like, yeah, you never want to spend time removing these, but then if you don't, the second and third chapters become good. And if they become good, the fourth chapter becomes good. I mean, this is just, I mean, we're fucked. <laughs> to, put, to use the political term, 15 damage coming, you've got to block four, as like with the chunk of everything. You know, we just, uh, I mean, that's just unlucky, man. <laughs> So many removal spells for these before they grow. And Kamano, they would be exiled. Torch, they would be exiled. Like, if you know what you're against, you can mulligan if you don't have those, which I guess is where best of three is good. But sadly, we would win that three times in four on the draw. Okay, everybody, quick look at the stats. They are a bit skewed because of the weird, uh, the weird loss bug that we had and with the, the you know various games that were thrown one way or another um however i think what is quite clear <clears throat> is that a 79 percent win rate is very good now let's take this with a pinch of salt right it's a new deck and a new meta no one really knows what they're doing um and so i wouldn't expect this to sort of continue weeks on however what this does show is that if you want to play this right now and you want to climb the ladder look at the speed of these games fine this one was slow and we lost it this one was slow and we won it but two two five one eight four 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 five these are rapid games man. i don't know how long the average game of magic the gathering is but that's definitely longer than our average 14 games in 70 minutes it's pretty good it's pretty fast uh, and this one was particularly long but at least we did win it i mean it's a fun deck you can see that what i was doing it's playing around a lot. Like this is version two, and I also created old, old other versions which uh, Untapped didn't pick up. I really wanted this card to be good. Monstrous Rage, Target Rage gets plus two plus zero until end of turn, and you put a monster roll on it. So it's basically plus three plus one, and trample for one, uh, and it gives you an extra permanent, and one one survives because it's the roll. But I don't know. You just never have creatures when you want to play this. If you're playing too many, you could potentially play one or two. But what are you cutting for it? You don't want to cut creatures, you don't want to cut removal, you don't want to cut Kakazan. I don't want to cut more expensive stuff. It's tricky. Uh, Virtue of Loyalty I was trying, which is a mythic. Um, it creates tokens and it puts 1-1s one on your creatures. It's just too slow for this deck. The 5 costing thing is too slow. Maybe in like a bigger go-wide deck involving Jetmir or something. Uh, and then this one was just a bit of a, a stupid decision anyway this is definitely the best form of this deck that i've found i think the boros uh shell leans to aggro even with the three blind mice it just it's just enough to help you grind through you know in the games where it's close like against fairies or something and then you've got these like a uh, couple of cards on the top end just to even you out which seems to work i mean archangel elspeth came into her own against the fairies deck and the riot use helped push through a couple of decks maybe one of these is better than the other we could maybe have four Raiju, zero Elspeth, I'm not sure yet. This is the card I'm not sure about, Belligerent of the Ball. Still not sure. I think it's a bit underpowered for the deck. And we probably have better three drops that can go in this slot. Like maybe just another Squee uh, and one of these. I've only got three copies of this and I've only got two copies of this. Maybe we just run more copies of the better things rather than two copies of here. But it was fun to try it out and it wasn't awful. It just, it just always felt a little bit meh. Uh, this card... It, is good in this deck, but it's probably even better in the Rakdos version of this deck where you can sack that roll token, um, you know, using braids or something. So we might try and build around that at some point. Um, Torch the Tower seems exceptional. Uh, two or three damage if you want to sack something, and you could sack the wicked rolls that this creates to then do extra damage. 
Uh, Kamano seems broken in this shell, which is already an amazing card, but the fact that it gives you two permanents entering the battlefield across three turns for one mana when permanents entering the battlefield are giving us such strong effects it just seems really good so i mean yeah stars of the show are the usual stars of the show this thing seems really good man because we can trigger celebration so easily this is a four four flying haste on turn three that you can buff later if you've got extra mana and you can trigger it again this is a good card anyway Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I absolutely love when a new set comes out, so there's definitely going to be more content for me. Stick around on the channel. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.